Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Estancia El Apacho in Paraguay and we are just taking this combine back to the shed. Now we're not actually going to keep this combine because this is the one that we leased to replace our normal combine because that one broke down. Um, so I'm just taking this one back over here and I'm going to put the header back in the shed and then when I've done that I can send this combine to uh, back to the dealership. It's all done with, we don't need it anymore, um, all finished. We will just take it down here first and we will clean it all off. We will also clean the combine off, um, just you know, because we're feeling generous. My random event for this week, now last week we couldn't use our telehandler, that one was out, so we weren't able to use it, uh, which is a bit unfortunate because we did need to feed the cows, so I mean, we ended up it wasn't quite so important as I thought it might have been, and um, we didn't really need to feed the cows, so the cows still need feeding, um, and we can deal with that. But no, the, the random event this week, I shook a three first, which put me onto the animal table, and then I shook a one, which is 10% of all our live, 10% of the largest herd, of the main herd, which is cattle for us, um, have died. They, there was a disease, and 10% of the animals died, which is really unfortunate because the week before last we had we were celebrating because we'd had so many sets of twins from the cows our herd had increased by 10 percent and now we've come crashing back down to earth again um so we have 194 cows because we lost 22 cows due to disease which was really bad it was really unfortunate um so yeah we we're pretty much back to how we were <laughs> two weeks ago um but it's 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 not all bad, you know. We, we've lost a few cows, but we've managed to save the rest of the herd. So we haven't. It's, it's not all bad, you know. You you lose, you win some, you lose some, sort of basically. And yes, we do feel sorry for the cows that didn't make it, but at least we only lost ten percent. We could have lost a lot more, but the disease was brought under control. The diligent actions of the local vets uh, that they, they managed to isolate what the disease was, and we very quickly dealt with it. Um, problem solved and now we can move on so uh, we, we don't have any more concerns about the rest of the herd developing any kind of illnesses uh, at least not in the near future so yeah we've lost 10% of our cows and that does mean now that uh, base food is at 15% rather than 14 or whatever it was um, we are going to need to feed the cows I don't know if we'll do that today because I would like to get our main job finished at the top of the map I'd like to get the ploughing and the stumps all done, finished, and gotten out of the way so that we don't have to deal with that anymore. Um, I, before I put this one back in the shed, I do just want to go up here to the top end of the map. Now, that one's just sat there and waiting. We're not going to do... No, not with that one. Um, there, this one. I'm going to go back to that one, and I just want to set the hired help going again so that we can get that field finished, and then he can move on to the next one. He's, he's very, very busy. He's got a lot of cultivating ahead of him. Um, he's cultivating all of the land that we're going to be planting corn in. Um, we're going to be planting corn or maize, whichever you want to call it, up here. So the, the cultivator there has got a bit of work to do in order to get that finished. So we'll come back down here again. Um, the big bud has finished that field there. That's all done. So we've got two more fields that we need to get planted with beans. We've got these two here, four and five, that we want planted with beans. So we've got one, six and three have now been done. Once he's done these two, we're going to have to top him back up with seed, and we're going to start him planting this field down here. These fields, these have got to be done with the row crop planter. So we're going to have to get that one out of the shed and get that one started. And we'll probably want to get that one started fairly soon, actually. Um, now, what's going on with this one? It does strange things. If you exit the game with the cultivator down, or... Even with the cultivator up, it'll come back in and sometimes it sort of puts the cultivator down and um, not quite the position that you left it in. I don't know. It, it does It does do some peculiar things at times. Um, but anyway, it, it's fine. It's fine. We've got no, nothing to worry about. Let that one carry on up through there. Okay. There's all our workers busy working. There's our pony. And I want this one. Right. Let's go and put this back in the shed. And my weekly question that I asked you all last week was, did you want me to plant stuff on the plateau to the south? Did you want me to cut down a load of trees on there? Not the entire thing, because that, I thought, would take too long. Um, but sort of this end of it over here. Did you want me to cut a load of it, chuck some, you know, and save some logs and do some moving of the logs with the train and the crane down here? Um, yes or no? And we had 
1,291 people answered that question. 208 said no, we don't want you to do it. And 1,083 said yes, please do something on that plateau to the south. So a, a clear majority for um, doing something over there. So we will be going up there and be cutting down some trees. A large number of people said please finish the job to the north first. Get that one finished before I start the one to the south. And yes, I fully intend to. I'm, I have no intention of starting the plateau before we finish the stuff up in the north. Um, I want to get that done and finished so that we got that job is is another one under our belt and it's it's all done with. I have absolutely no intention of starting another one before we finish that. Um, and that being said, we are very close to finishing that one up there anyway, so it's not going to take very much longer to get that all done and then um, we can move on and start work on the plateau. A lot of people would like me to drop... Um, the logs, take the logs, cut the logs, and then dump them over the side. You seem to think that that would be a really cool thing for me to do. Um, right, so bring that one back like that. So yes, we will try that. I'm not going to be selling all of the timber up there. Mostly what we'll be doing is just plowing it up and getting rid of the timber. Some of it we will cut up and we will drop over the side, over the other side, and we will turn that into um, something that we can sell. Uh, we'll put it onto the train and we'll take it over to the sawmill and we will sell it like that because we haven't done that on this map. So that is something that we will do. Now I'm just going to leave that one right there actually. Switch it off. Um, and then if I contact the dealership a minute they will come and collect that one which is what I want them to do. So if I go into the garage like this and then we go to our leased machinery and the T670i I want to return yes. Okay. Job done. That's all been returned. Everything is good. Our combine over here is now all fixed up and ready to go. So is the Merlot as well. That one is fixed up and ready to go. Um, I'm not going to worry about them for today. We're just going to leave them there. We've got our workers busy working in the field. Um, before I go very much further, I want to ask you this week's question, which is to do with the plateau here. Now, I just recently showcased the Roper machinery, the new Roper DLC that's come out. I was given a free copy of it, so I've got it available to use. We can use it on this map if we want to. And a number of people suggested that I should do something with potatoes or sugar beets so that I can do something with that. And I was thinking to either grow potatoes or sugar beet up here in field 26 to have something for the pigs so that it's ready for when we uh, want to activate the pigs. I haven't forgotten that I said that we were going to make some hay and stuff for the cows first. Um, that I still want to do. I still want to do this area down here um, for the cows. So this is sort of a little bit into the future, but we will do it. I'm not sure about potatoes or sugar beet yet, I haven't quite decided, but my question is, do I do potatoes or sugar beet there, or do I push the absolute limits of what that machinery can do and do potatoes or sugar beet uh, here on the plateau? Now, some people suggested I do some arable crops up here. I was thinking maybe we could try arable crops and then I'm um, doing it with the small machinery. And a lot of people said, no, we want to stick with grass up here. It's just too rough for arable. Uh, so I'm going to give you the choice. Do we do potatoes or sugar beet up on the plateau or do we do them up on field 26? So I'm, I'm going to give this a simple yes or no question. Potatoes or sugar beet here on the plateau, yes or no? Um, I, I don't know which one we'll do. We will sort of play that one a bit more by ear when we get a bit closer to the time. Um, I will go on whatever the, the majority crop usually is in South America and we'll sort of do that to keep it reasonably realistic, if at all possible. Um, but yeah, all I want to know this week is do you want me to try and do that up on the plateau or do you want me to stick with field 26? Um, over by the pigs, which was what my original, that's what my original plan was going to be, was the field 26 over there. Um, so yeah, it's your vote, it's your game, head into the comment section down below, let us know which one you want and why, and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. Uh, we've got the stump cutter, disable the plow, no, I want the plow on. I think that is everything that I need, I can just start grinding some of these stumps. I want to get rid of a whole load of the stumps that are in the way at the moment and then once we've done that we will hop back onto the plough. We don't have a great deal left to do here in this area 
most of that is done we i think i've even done all of the stumps over on that bit as well i've just got a few bits of sawdust and stuff like that and then there's some bits at the north end at uh, south end of that field and then north end of this field over here just this patch here that i'm sort of looking at um once we get all of that done that's it we're finished we've done the entire job and I feel that is worth celebrating somehow. I have no idea how we would actually celebrate because, um, yeah, I'm sort of fresh out of ideas on that one. But, yes, it's, it's, well, at least we can give ourselves a pat on the back because this is a huge job that we've undertaken up here. We've done a lot of work up here. So let's just pull all of these through. I want to get all of these stumps here at the moment, get them out of the way. While our workers are busy working, we've got the cultivator going over there. We've got the seed drill busy going as well. It's all looking, it's, it's quite industrious on the farm. It is getting late in the evening. I'm oversteering on this one now. I do I do, do that from time to time. You, you, you want, if you're using a load of other machinery, you do tend to sort of forget about this one and then you, um, you oversteer an awful lot. It's very, very easy to oversteer this um, skid steer as well. It's very easy to oversteer it. And then you just sort of end up sort of wiggling backwards and forwards <laughs> across the road or across the field as you drive along, which is... And it, it feels a little bit peculiar because you, you try to correct and you end up oversteering again and you overcorrect and you get and that's and that's how it really starts to wiggle it really starts to go a bit strange then right why aren't you plowing under um oh it's because it's a stump go forward a bit well, there we go look see is that actually like a... I don't think that's a piece of timber that's been left on the ground. I think that is actually some sort of stump that is in the ground. Which is a little bit odd. But, I mean, if as long as the, the stump grinder here can actually take out take it all out, it should be all right. There we go. Okay, ideal. Done that one. For a minute there, I thought we was going to have a bush left in the middle of the path. but uh, In the middle of the field, rather. But, um, no, we haven't. It's all, it's all good. It's all fine. Um, one thing I do want to just check... I know we're planting corn up here, so we're going to have to um, plough and cultivate that field in the middle. I just wanted to see if it needs ploughing. It doesn't. No. Uh, the only bit that we've got that we own now that needs ploughing is that part of field 14 there and half of field 2 because we ploughed up half of it previously. Um, the rest of it is all good, actually. We haven't got any issues at all with the rest of it. Uh, let's go over this way. We've got one stump. We've got a huge pile of stumps up on the top end of this little stretch here. Um, there was a lot of trees up there. So we want to grab some of those. And most importantly, I wanted to try and get a lot of the ploughing done today, if I could. Because what we were doing, before we started the harvest, we were doing like a little bit every single day. A little bit of ploughing or a little bit of stump grinding. So I didn't sort of bore you to tears with loads and loads and loads of it all the same throughout the entire episode uh, but at the same time we were still progressing forward with our job and getting the whole thing done so once we've done this i wanted to go down and remove a load of the bushes and shrubs and stuff with the grass to the south near the silage clamp and i was thinking that we would turn that into grass so we would plow it all up and then turn it into grass um Maybe, maybe not. I, I'm not quite sure at the moment. We could use the roller. I've been told by a lot of people that I can use the roller that we use to put the concrete down. Um, and I could just go over it with that one. And that will actually just delete it and put it as a uh, normal grass. But I don't know. It's, it sort of feels a bit cheaty doing it that way. Um, I, I, I've got to be honest. I'm not that... I, I don't particularly like the idea of doing it like that. It, it does feel like we're sort of getting the field with um, too little effort. And I know that we've put in a lot of work into this bit up here. So we, we have done our fair share of hard work in order to acquire new land. But at the same time, it still feels cheating. I'll bring that one in here. I'm trying to catch the edge of where that stump is. Is he going to get it? Is he doing an awful lot? I'm going to leave that one there a minute, just carry on to do its work. And I'm going to skip over here because the big bud has done its... Oh, that one's finished as well. So I'll take you and... Where are you? Do right, you're done there. Soil composition. Right, that's what we need. We want this one. So, oh, I haven't done field eight either. It's harvested, but it is not ploughed or cultivated. It's cultivated that we want. All right, we will go. We will drop down to field eight a minute. And we'll do that one. And then we can do that one right there, field nine. And then we'll worry about the big field at the top. So if I just move on to here, to field eight. 
we can start working on this one. Then I can go and get the big bud and we can move that one to the next point. I'll bring that one in round there and start from there, I think. Is that about right? Okay, that's looking pretty good. The ST Max 180. I quite like these tractors. The more we're using them, the more I quite like them. It, it, I, I know that they don't have the, um, the front hydraulics, which is a little bit inconvenient for some jobs, but generally speaking, they are actually pretty good, these tractors. It, they seem quite strong for their size. We, we have been pulling around some fairly big machinery for the size of the tractor that we've got there, and uh, that does, um, you know, I do feel that that is um, pretty good. It, you know, there are some some varieties of tractors they couldn't pull granny off the pot so then you've got other tractors that are just they just seem to be an absolute powerhouse and it doesn't matter what you throw at them they're always able to do anything you want them to it's absolutely fantastic so that's what i quite like about the stara the stara definitely seems to be of the breed that it doesn't really matter what you ask it to do it's going to be able to do it without grunting very much at all it's 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 just built for power Compact power is what it's all about. Right, let's drop that one down there. I, although I don't imagine that they would be able to tow this one up across the field. This one is just a little bit beyond even the Stara's capabilities. It's a shame that Stara don't actually make a tractor big enough to pull this Stara drill. I would prefer to have that, but um, this is what we got. And I do like the big bud, the, the little bud. This is, this is the little bud. Um, and I do like it. I was quite pleased that we ended up using because we have not used this at all we did use a big bud for a short while i think i can't actually remember what it was for now but yeah we, we have used one right what is going on here why is this stump not grinding we need to can i do it like that maybe no nope. you do occasionally get the odd stump that just doesn't want to cooperate and i think maybe we just need to come round from a different direction on this one. Let me just lift that grinder up ever so slightly. And we'll come over like this and take out the rest of it so that it does sort of clean it up a little bit. And then come around there like that. Over to this side. Right, we've got a huge, great big uh, tree stump here. That's better. That's There's a, a, a much wider sort of hit... Ah, there we go. A, a much wider hitbox on this side of it. Occasionally, if you get the tree from the wrong angle... You don't sort of hit, you don't like, um, you're not in the hitbox properly for being able to get the stump out properly. And as a result, you end up sort of just sat there grinding um, and making sawdust, but not actually going anywhere. It doesn't actually remove the stump or um, sort of go through whatever it, the internal calculations are for um, removing the stump. I don't actually know what that is. I, I don't know if there's like a, a set calculation it takes where you've got to spend so long inside the hitbox with the stump grinder in order for it to remove the stump. I'm, I'm, or if there's like a, um, a counter in there that counts the amount of sawdust that is removed from the stump before it um, disappears. And I'm not sure how the exact game mechanics of that work. It could be an interesting thing to find out, that one. Um, yeah, if anybody does actually know, if anybody's like made any maps or anything like that, I would very much like to find out um, how it is that they work. Well, what's what's the, the like the, the specifics of how they calculate whether or not the stump should still be there or not? Because that, it, it, I feel that that information it would sort of give insight as to why we sometimes have the stumps. You you can sit there for absolutely ages making sawdust from a stump, but it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't actually do anything at all. It just keeps producing sawdust, like this one here. I suspect that this one will never, ever disappear. And I mean, if I move, then it will disappear. But if you just stay there in the same spot without moving, it, it generally doesn't actually disappear at all. It just stays there and stays there and keeps producing sawdust. You've sort of got an infinite supply of money. Um, which is great and all, but it is rather slow producing it. Um, and I imagine it would be rather dull to sit there and earn millions and millions of pounds or dollars, whatever it is that you want to earn, um, just by grinding infinite stumps. That would get that would get a little slow and tedious. We we'll just bring up through here. I'm gonna just do this stump and that one over there. There might be one just on the very edge there as well that we can grab. Um, and then we've done this bit. That's all the stumps out. So then we'll go and um, hop onto the plow so that we can do a little bit of plowing today as well. 
I don't just want to be doing stump grinding. Um, the cultivator is busy working again hard and we've got the beans being planted. So really we ought to have the Vardastad up here and get that one started planting. It might be that might actually be a good idea because it does that one does take a little while to keep going especially as it's also quite slow going with um like keeping it because he empties out so fast as the one annoying thing about that Vardastad that we've got is that it does empty out very very quickly it takes a, it's got a huge quantity of fertilizer on board and it's hardly got anything else on it so i think that maybe we ought to the stump's not grinding Again, we've got one of the awkward ones. Right, let me go around to this side a minute. Um, take all of that out like that. Stop there. We're back around. And come on to this side. There we go. Right. That should get rid of... There we go. Now it's starting to move. Get rid of this stump completely. And a little bit more. Now, I could actually get rid of the piles of sawdust using this one. I've just got to take it off, allow create fields. So if I go like that, now if I go onto here, I want to make sure that it is limit to fields. There we go. Right, now, the one way to find out if it's definitely limited to fields now is if I just lower it down a little bit and go forward, yes. Right, that is now limited to fields. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up through here and I'm going to plow off these little bits. It won't take long. There's also one thing... Oh, actually, I can very quickly find out. Does this... No, that doesn't. Right. I was just wondering if maybe we could sort of do that. and Because you can get machines like a heavy-duty cultivator that doesn't actually, like, plough the ground as such, but it does, like, rip up the surface, and that would remove all of the large shrubs. So if we could do something like that, it's not actually creating a new field, but it is still going through and deleting all of the, um, the, the the shrubs and the bits like that on the ground, which we could then use for our, um, the cow field down the bottom so that we can turn that one into a more viable um, piece of land so that we can um, do our, um, what is it, grass. So we can, plant, we can plant our, well, we wouldn't even need to plant the grass then. We wouldn't have to do it at all. I mean, obviously, ploughing it up means that we're then able to fertilise the grass and we do get a higher yield doing it that way. Um, but, you know, it, it's... it's Well, the, the, the both options are available. But it doesn't look like we can actually do that. It looks like the only way to get rid of the shrubs is either to use the roller and roll them out, which, to me, I don't particularly like the idea of doing. It does feel a little bit cheaty. Or we go just go over with the standard plough. Um, I've had several people asking why I'm not using the jimper plough in order to do this because the jimper plough is a little bit wider than the one that we're using. And the main reason is I've used the jimper plough before. We used that one a lot back in Goldcrest Valley. And um, technically it's not even a plough. Technically it is a um, subsoiler rather than a plough. And so I wanted to use an actual plough for this series rather than the subsoiler. I just thought it would fit it a little bit better. We'd try and keep things a little bit more realistic on it. Um, I know that in some parts of the world that is probably closer to the actual ploughs you use than um, the not. Because in the UK, we, we use ploughs like the one that we're using on this map. Whereas in some parts of the world, you, you tend to use sort of... Well, it's, it's really nothing more than a glorified cultivator, isn't it? Um, you don't do deep moldboard ploughing like we do in Europe um, and, and in a lot of the US and in other parts of the world as well. Um, now, there's one other thing I wanted to do. I'm over here next to the plateau with our truck. And something that we haven't done for quite a while, I'm just going to back this one up a bit, is we haven't checked the eggs. Uh, we haven't checked the chickens for eggs. And, you know, I don't even remember where the chickens are now. They are... Where are the... They're over there. They're all the way over there. Chickens are about as far away from the farm as you can possibly get. It's the one thing that I really don't particularly like about this map is where the chickens are. Um, I It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever sticking the chickens all the way over here. I mean, what exactly is the point of that? that, that it just literally doesn't make any sense. I'm sure there is a reason for it. 
I'm no doubt that there is reason for it, but why stick your chickens over here? You, you're running a farm. You're not going to stick your chickens a hundred miles away from everything else. So, yeah, I'm, I would be, I'm very curious what the reason is. If, if Giants actually posted up, like, a, a, um, a reason for that, as a, um, somewhere on one of the forums, has anybody, like, addressed the question as to why the chickens are so far away from the farm? It's kind of like the Sosnovka map. I really, that one was bizarre to me as well. Those chickens were parked off in the middle of nowhere and made absolutely no sense. The Goldcrest Valley one, that was perfect. You know, they're right outside your house. Uh, we're just a little ways off to the, you know, by the house, but they're close enough that it's convenient. You don't have to get in your truck and drive for a half an hour in order to get there. So, yes, if anybody does know if this has ever been addressed either here or for the Sosnyovka map, because I'm sure it'd be for the same reason, why do we have to go so far to get to our chickens? It literally makes, it makes no sense, right? I've lived on farms or small holdings most of my life, and... You know, you need to be able to check your chickens at least twice a day. Usually, you let your chickens out in the morning and then you cl you shut them away again at night just to, you know, keep them safe. Um, you've got to feed them. You've got to collect the eggs and so on. So you wouldn't stick them miles away from your farm. It, li it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. There's literally no reason I can think of that you would do that. Um, this one, you could argue that there is a house over there and that is actually the house that the person who looks after the chickens lives in. Okay, I can buy into that. But then how do you explain the Sosnovka one? Because that, that there's no housing anywhere near that one. You've got a dealership down off, you know, down the hill. But the nearest, ta the nearest house was way off in town. So that one literally made no sense at all. It was... Um, the most ridiculous place to ever put chickens that I could think of. Um, I could be barking up the wrong tree. I could be completely off my trolley with this. Um, you know, sort of getting slightly annoyed about the, the, the location of the chickens. I mean, there are other things to get annoyed about in the world. Um, so if, if this is my biggest problem, then um, we've definitely got a case of first world problems here. Um, but does anybody actually know what the reason is for sticking the chickens in the middle of nowhere because to me it makes no sense at all um yeah I, I i cannot think of a single valid legitimate reason for sticking them completely in the middle of nowhere um away from absolutely everything else right let me just stop that one there and the big body's done just wondering what because i did say i was going to do a bit of plowing but at the same time i also now we got the cultivating underway what tractors are? Let's go through our tractors a minute. I'm going to have to do it like this. The Big Bud is completely finished already. Oh, yeah, it was only a small field. Um, I'm going to need to top that one up with seed. So we got we got that to deal with. I need to move this one onto the seed tender. That tractor is not really suited to pulling the Vardastad, I don't think. Um, we've got this one up here. Now, this is a reasonably powerful tractor. We could take that one, and we got that one there, and... Oh, we got this one here. This is this is a slightly smaller tractor. I would actually like to use this one up here because we haven't used this one for a very long time. So we may not actually get to finishing the plowing to do, or doing any of the plowing today because we've done a load of stump grinding. I want to get um, another seed drill underway. I'm also actually thinking that it's getting close to night time. It's, you know, 1700 now, uh, 1900 now. Um, it's probably getting close to the time where we want to say goodnight and, you know, sleep the night, get, get, a, get a little bit of rest, and then in the morning we can sort of carry on. We're going to need to feed the cows in the morning. We've got base food down to 14%. So we get... I think what we need to do is we, we, we need to sort of think... I'm, I'm all over the place at the moment. We need to prioritise a little bit here. I've got a field that is ready to start planting. The cultivator is busy working. That one is going to work through the night. I've got a couple of people from the nearby town who've said that they're going to help us out. They're quite keen, and they're going to do a bit of shift work on that so that the cultivator doesn't actually stop overnight. So we're going to get this one back. We're going to unhitch this machine here. So I'm just going to fold that one, and I'm going to put that one down. I don't like the way that this one folds up. Sticks the spout way out in front, but there's not a lot that we can do about that. Um, and we are going to just speed up time like that so that we can spend the night. And then in the morning, we're going to put this one onto the Vardastad. And then once we've done that, we're going to top it all up the seat. I'm going to swap the man truck over, get that one on there ready to go as well. Now, this blower, where the best place to put this one is? In the shed here somewhere, obviously. 
Um, I reckon we'll stick that one just there next to the stump grinder. You can fit over there quite nicely. I'm actually thinking that it would be better if we didn't leave it with the spout out. I think it would be better if we did that because then we can put it in tighter to the wall. It would, it would just work a lot better if we did it like that. And there I can unhitch it. So if I jump out, we can take off the PTO and we can unhitch the machine as well. And then it should just stay there without any problems. Now, I don't have a front weight and I think really I should have a front weight for doing the seed drilling. I would say probably a half weight for doing the seed drilling. Although, do I have a front weight for this one? I, there's one in the shed in there. I don't know if I had another one lying around. I don't think I did. We got that one there. I'm going to take that front weight there and we're going to use that one so that we've got a little bit of extra traction for doing the seed drilling. Sometimes you would use a front weight for seed drilling and sometimes you wouldn't. I think that we... I think this time that we do actually want to. So we'll just get out and we'll hitch that one on there. It's not tremendously heavy, that one. Um, but it's enough to give us an extra bit of traction for if we, you know, if we do need any on any of the hills or anything like that. Um, it's my justification for having the front weight there. So we'll bring this one over. Um, it's getting quite dark now. That that would make sense because it's like 11 o'clock. So we just get this one hitched on. There we go. We got a bit of light. That's much better. The John Deere is certainly blindingly bright, isn't it? Bring that one back round. There we go. And out a little bit. There we go. And I can hitch that one on and put the PTO on as well. Right, we have... We're full of seed. But now she realised this one was full of seed. Ideal, right. We'll take this one over here and we'll park it up so it is ready to go first thing in the morning. And then we will go and get a little bit of shut-eye. A bit of breakfast, that sort of thing. There we go. Cultivator is going to stay working overnight. Uh, we had $110,000 from sold milk. That's not too bad. Vehicle leasing costs 25,000, 8,000 for vehicle running costs. Uh, loan interest was 1,000. Close that door there. Right, it's um I normally go I I, I normally sleep in the other bedroom, but yeah, and 15,300 for animal upkeep. This is not our bedroom. I'm going to go through here. This is not the master bedroom. Our master bedroom is over here because it's the one that's got the study on the side of it. So we want to go over here. And let's just shut the doors. Right. Uh, I, I will also shut this door because I, I don't want all the insects coming in overnight. Right. And let's get a bit of sleep. Just going over the finances here this morning. And things are looking pretty good. We've got $124,000. The loans are looking pretty good. And, yeah, all, all the rest of the upkeep and everything else is fine. So we have a bit of breakfast, some fruits. Nothing like a bit of fruit to start the day. And survey our vast kingdom. It does. It's absolutely fantastic. Can you imagine what it would be like to wake up in the morning and have this view out of your balcony? And just that, yeah, that, it would be actually pretty cool. I, I would very much enjoy that. I really would. Right, um, okay, I've, I've already dealt with all of that business. Um, so let's head on downstairs and we've got to get some work done. Um, we are going to be doing the, um... The planting. We just come out here and I'll, I'll shut those doors. Right. Yeah. So we're going to be doing the planting with the Vardastad here. We're going to get that one going. I need to get the man truck swapped over. We also need to feed the cows. Our base food is down to just 6%. So we've got to do something with the cows fairly quickly, fairly sharpish, or they're going to run out of food. So let's just take this one up. Then we can worry about the, the cows are going to be the next thing that we do, which we're not going to actually have time to do that today, though. Um, that's going to have to be something that we work on next time. The, um, oh, uh, canola. I couldn't remember the name of the crop right there. I was thinking oilseed radish. No, it's not oilseed radish. Somebody suggested that we plant oilseed radish across the entire farm to give the soil a bit of a chance to rest. We're not, um, because you plant it and then you plow it back in and that, like, does a... Um, layer of fertilizer and unfortunately the suggestion came too late to implement it this time round but I do think it's actually a really good idea so next time round we will be doing that um, and I think that I, I I do particularly like that idea we haven't really done very much in the way of oilseed radish so we will do that across the entire farm 
next time round because we've got the little bud and we've also got the Estrela sea drill which means that we'll be able to very very quickly get across the entire farm and do that without any issues whatsoever it's going it's going to be extremely quick Right, so there is our John Deere busy starting its planting. We have got quite a lot of maize to get planted. We've also got quite a lot of maize that we've got in the storage at the moment. If you look through here, we've got 200,000 litres of maize stored. Uh, 720 there in the bakery, 540 in the harbour, 695 up there. We've also got a whole load of this stored over in the train storage facility. Now, 1854 for beans. We want to actually start moving those beans. We want to do that very, very soon, probably in our next... Well, actually, I think we may do that tomorrow. We may sell the beans. We need to make sure that we do stay on top of selling some of our crops because if we don't, we end up losing them because we end we, we sort of get a bad random event happen and then we end up losing a whole load of stuff. My question for this week is we are going to be chopping down a load of trees on this end of the plateau and turning it into a field. Do you want me to plant my, I, it's either going to be sugar beet or potatoes up here and try and sort of fight with the really uneven ground and everything up there. It's going to, that would be really, really difficult. Um, or do you want me to plant the, um, the sugar beet and everything over there? If, if you say no to planting it here, we will plant a little field of it over there. Quite possibly potatoes and then do it with the small um, tractor drawn harvester rather than trying to do any self propelled stuff. Down here, we could very well end up doing the tractor drawn harvester anyway and do potatoes. I'm not quite sure at the moment. I haven't really um, decided which one, but we will do a root crop. But it's whether you want me to do the root crop up here on this end of the plateau, because you've already said, yes, you want me to do something up here and plow it all up. Is whether or not we do a root crop up there or leave the root crops elsewhere. So um, yes or no, do you want a root crop up here on the plateau? Um, it's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner up here. Um, the field up here, we will hopefully get some more of that ploughed up tomorrow. I'm not sure. We, well, I did intend to do some today, but we kind of ran out of time. But um, yeah, we've, we've got so much to do. I want to keep things moving now. It took us so long to get our first harvest done and then the first planting done. I kind of want to keep things moving along as rapidly as possible now in order to sort of make sure that the, the series does progress at least a little bit. It would be nice. Um, but that is all i got time for today. So if you enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.